another common question is the, the ability to use Google Tag Manager and Segment at the same time. Now there's some overlap between them. So if you do see like, oh, they seem to be doing the same thing, you are partially correct. They do very similar things. Now you can actually use them together. And there's two ways. You can either load Google Tag Manager through Segment or you can load Segment through Google Tag Manager, right? So let's look at the first one. So using Google Tag Manager to Segment, you will add it as a destination, right? So we go into destinations and we go here and find Google Tag Manager. We add it to a JavaScript source and here's our container ID. And then we can choose to, you know, to track a few pages and so on. There's some custom settings that we can pass on. Um, and then, but basically you're, you're basically just simply loading the snippet here on the page through segment. All of the tags you'll be managing inside Google Tag Manager. So this might be a use case if you have a team that already uses Google Tag Manager for pixels, for example, and you want to consolidate all the loading of things through segment, but you still want to let people use Google Tag Manager to load pixels, or maybe do some specific things for AdWords or some other Google products. So this works. One thing to keep in mind when you put these tools together is the timing of it. So segment, in this case, segment will load first, and then Google Tag Manager will load. In most cases, the difference between the tools loading is, is, is nothing but something to keep in mind. Now we can also load segment through Google Tag Manager. So what that means is we will load the, the container snippet for Google Tag Manager, right? We load the two snippets here. We will load them on the page directly, and then we will load segment through a tag. And this is actually what I'm doing here on my website. So I'm, I'm loading Google Tag Manager directly on the page, and then as a tag, I'm loading segment. So here you can see segment.com, this is a custom HTML tag. And then here I just have the, the JavaScript snippet for segment.com. We can see, you know, the analytics.load, which loads segment, and then the analytics.page, which fires a page view for segment. And then for trigger, we're simply firing it on all the pages, right? Now, what that means in our case is then we can actually add other tags here, which are some of the specific segment tags, like the analytics.track or the analytics.identify and so on. And that can be a way to manage all your tags, right? That can be an option. Either option works. There's no good or bad to either one. It's really mostly a preference and it's really more how you want to use them. What you do want to avoid is perhaps trying to overlap, right? So if you think the easiest way for your team to load pixels, for example, like Facebook pixels, AdWords pixels, is to do it through Google Tag Manager, then use Google Tag Manager, right? Don't load pixels to Google Tag Manager and load them through segment as well, right? There's a slight difference in, in the pixel side. Um, there's some things you can do through segment that are a little harder to do in Google Tag Manager, but you you probably be better off choosing one. Otherwise, people have to figure out is it you know is it a segment is it Google Tag Manager? Who knows? And that's really it. Uh, in the in the case of Google Tag Manager, it doesn't really receive as much data as, as some of the other ones. Let's, let's pop over here. Let's, let's go look at some of the you know the destination. Uh, we can of course. Patch, uh, we, we can pass some, some things like some of the page tags and a few things like that. And one of the interesting things is when you pass a track call, you know, like we see here, like an analytics.track, and we pass an event called play video, this will actually get passed on to the data layer, right, as an object. So we'll have an event, which is called play video, and then we have some properties for the event, which is the properties we passed on. Then you can, of course, hook on to that event, that data layer event, inside Google Tag Manager. So that, that could be a way for you to pass events through segment to say tools like Mixpan or Google Analytics and still let people hook onto them as data layer events inside of it, right? But as you can see, it's a, it's, it's a relatively simple setup.